Have you ever wondered what one of those PNG images with the fake transparent background sounds like? Wow, that's so good. Now I've actually already done a video before where I took images that I drew and turned those into sounds. But this little website here is actually a little bit different and I feel like it actually has potential to be used as a real music making tool. Waved PNG made with red heart emoji by direct. So not only can you convert PNG image files into wave audio files, as the name obviously demonstrates, you can convert wave files into PNG files and then you can edit those PNG files and then convert them back into audio. Let's do a little bit of experimenting. Let's start off by bringing in a loop, one of these very basic guitar ones should do. Yeah. Drag the wave file here, and that is what the PNG looks like. It looks pretty crazy. Hit download PNG file, and now we just need to take this over into your favorite image editing software. For me, that is gonna be Affinity Photo, and now we have our image. This looks so crazy. <laughs> it's so wide too. So for a quick little demonstration, let's go ahead into the filters section and I might just throw on a Gaussian blur or something like that. This is just going to be blurring the image a little bit, which should also blur the sound once you convert it back into a WAV file. Drag you over there, click download. This is all so fast. That is one speedy boy. Now let's go bring the sample into Ableton and it does look a little bit blurred. The sample is definitely more drawn out when you compare it to the original. Very clean. Now the blurred version. Oh. That's not what I was expecting. That sounds really cool though. It sounds like a little bit of a delay going on. It sounds a little bit granular. It actually sounds a little bit lo-fi as well. There's a whole lot of noise sitting on top. I actually quite like the vibe of that one. It really flattened out all the transients. It just blurred everything into a big noisy mess, but it sounds good. Now for another little test, let's throw something a bit more crazy on. We'll go for a little bit of ripple. Oh, this is gonna sound bad, isn't it? So that looks a lot flatter than I was expecting. There's a lot going on here though. It looks very choppy. I'm scared for this one. Let's turn it down. Wow, that sounds so good. I think we might need to tone down that ripple a little bit. Let's just go for something really low. It just gets a little bit of wave in there. I look a little bit different, still scared. That one sounds worse. But I can actually kind of hear the guitar in there now. Okay, maybe ripple is not the go-to. I don't think I can actually use that as a music making device. For a little bit more experimenting, maybe we should try a drum loop. Yeah, that looks a whole lot different so from what I understand. This correlation between the sound and the image actually flows downwards. So I'm guessing each of these lines is gonna be a hit. So that's probably gonna be the kick drum. That might be the snare and then another kick and then another snare because those ones there look exactly the same or maybe that is just a complete line i have no idea what i'm talking about now if my theory is correct if we throw a motion blur onto this and set it to like 90 degrees and then pull up the radius that should actually draw out each individual drum hit because it's blurring vertically drum motion blur hey that looks like it is working so this is what the original loop sounds like and then the vertical motion blur That didn't really work. <laughs> it sounds the same as the Gaussian one. I think it's actually a little bit clearer though because I guess it is keeping the same frequencies. The timing is a little bit messed up. It's not as blurry as I was expecting, but I feel like that might actually have something to do with the sample rate because it is very consistent. There's only one way to make sure. Let's go ahead and throw in another motion blur and we'll just crank this one right up. We'll just go like that. That's way flatter, but the kick drum's still there. I guess that's because it can't blur past the starting point of the image. That is interesting, but you can see it still has the exact same little spikes throughout the whole sample. So I feel like this one's still gonna be all granular, just like this one. That's a banger. It still sounds pretty cool though. It just sounds kind of like if you just stretch out the loop and then put it onto the beats stretching algorithm. Oh, that actually sounds cooler. And this one's actually quite a bit different. It starts blurring in the snare before the snare actually hits because I guess that's how the blurring works. It's pulling things up and down. Interesting. I still have faith in the ripple. Let's try to throw it onto some drums. Actually, maybe I should do it a little bit differently. So I'm guessing if time goes this way, then the frequency range must go 
either that way or that way. Let's just try to throw one of these ripples onto one side. And then hopefully that should keep the bass intact, but then all the highs are all messed up and wobbly. It might actually be a little bit more listenable. Hey, it worked. My theory was correct because there's still the thump of the kick and the snare in there. It's kind of listenable. I'm so confused. I'm just editing this video here and I've gotten to this point and I'm so sure that I've got the footage mixed up. I've checked like five or six different times just because I'm so confused that I said that this actually sounds listenable. It sounds terrible. What was I thinking? <laughs> Oh. Wait, so I'm guessing if we go ahead and throw a motion blur onto the right side of this image, that should make the high frequencies blurry. Yeah, this is looking like a success. It's still got all the transients, but all the hi-hats look a bit flatter. Why are popping so much though? <laughs> that is not what I expected. It's very poppy. Maybe we should just take this section here and blur it. Maybe going too high is messing with the, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it looks exactly the same, but does it sound the same? Yes, I'm definitely doing something wrong here. That sounds terrible. Get out of here. Big brain moment. What if we bring in the PNG from that guitar loop that we had at the start and overlaid it onto this one? Are they gonna play at the same time? And also theoretically, if they're the same amount of beats, if I just drag this down so that both of the different loops are the same image size, that should technically mean that they line up, right? Yeah, so I might just bring in a mask layer and we're just gonna throw a gradient onto this one. So I guess we'd want the higher frequencies of the guitar. So we'll go like that, drag that boy onto there. And now we have the guitar blending into the top. It's very hard to see, it just looks normal. Come on. Hey! That works! Kind of. It's really poppy like all the other ones, but at least you're technically getting both instruments in there and the timing lines up perfectly. I think this means that we can now arrange songs inside of Photoshop using PNG files. Let's do some more testing. So if this is the snare drum here, we should be able to stretch it down to stretch out the snare. That should sound pretty cool, but what if we grab it and then move to the next snare drum? Flip vertical, yeah. Now hopefully my theory should be right. So if my brain is big enough, we should have the kick drum here. The snare drum should be stretched out a bit and then there should be a slow reverse snare going into the second snare. <sighs> hopefully this actually works. I did that to the kick drum, so I guess this really thin one here is the snare drum. Still kind of worked though. It is very poppy as well, but that actually sounds pretty cool. Let's just actually try to do it the right way this time. So the snare drum is actually just one pixel long. Okay, so we want the snare drum to go like that. That is looking all good. We got a very fat snare drum, and this right here is looking like the next snare drum. Yeah. Now, while I'm here, I might actually try adding some more hi-hats as well. So if we just duplicate this one here, and go like that. That should technically add in more hi-hats. Okay, that is looking about right. So we have our extra hi-hats in here. Don't know what happens to the snare drum. <laughs> it looks like we've got a whole bunch of different snare drums in there too. That looks like it is gonna sound very stuttery. I'm really interested to see what these hi-hats sound like because those are literally just one pixel that I've put together. So hopefully those sound good. <laughs> hey. Why is the snare drum doing that? Instead of just stretching it out, it's just added in a whole bunch of different snare drums. Ah. I'm a little bit of a dummy for not noticing this earlier, but I just realized that when I stretched it down, it just duplicated the same lines over and over and over again. So what we should really do here is grab a motion blur. And then that makes it a little bit more of a gradual fade out, which I think is what we want. That looks a little bit more like it, but it's still just repeating the same snare drum. At least it gets quieter now. Hey! It has little delay repeats on, but I feel like that sounds different compared to if you just throw a normal delay onto the snare drum. Yeah, they do look pretty different. This one's got a little bit of spacing in between. I guess you could just achieve the same thing with a delay, but this is still a little bit more unique. Now, why don't we try to do the complete opposite of that? Let's grab the right half and then flip it vertically. That looks totally normal. <laughs> 
That is ridiculous. If it didn't have all the popping, it would actually be pretty cool, but it does not sound good at all. <laughs> That's terrible. I wonder what other filters we can try out. Lens distortion, let's go. That's a bulgy boy. Wait, it actually looks like it gets normal towards the middle of the beat. Ooh. Okay, <laughs> like three beats are actually normal. That was kind of cool though. I like the little fade in that it did. I wonder if I can take the same idea of having something in the middle be a little bit different. What if we go for a depth of field blur and we'll just have it on the tilt shift. So now everything in the middle should be in focus. All the outer parts should be blurry. So it should eventually fade into a clear bit in the middle. What happens if we change the vibrancy? or the clarity. Is that actually gonna make a difference? Is it gonna make the song sound any clearer? Have I discovered the number one top music producer tip? Probably not. That's a mess. Oh. Clarity adds in distortion. <laughs> I need to turn that down, that is so loud. That is actually a really cool fading effect though. Super unique. Wait a minute, I gotta do a test. If we throw saturation onto the picture, is that going to add audio saturate? No, it just added a bit of noise. So it seems like the contrast is what caused the distortion. Okay, next test. Normal snare drum. Oh, that is thin. <laughs> it's only a couple pixels there. Now I want to do some tests with manipulating frequencies. So if we go like this way, is that going to be manipulating the frequencies? Is this going to make it extra fat in the low range? That's unexpected. <laughs> There's a lot of phasing going on. Let's do it. What do we want to put on this one? I feel like the lens distortion could actually work pretty well. Now because it has only a couple pixels, it looks like it's not really changing too much, but it should be messing up all the harmonics and stuff, so it should still sound pretty funky. They look pretty similar. This band here is a lot fatter though. Normal sound. My sound. <laughs> Why does everything just sound the same? I feel like this would sound kind of cool if you just shortened it a whole bunch. <laughs> Sounds kind of normal. What if we throw a little bit of blur onto the sound? <laughs> kind of feel like I'm not really making any progress <laughs> with this. I'm definitely learning some things, but my sounds are just getting <laughs> worse and worse. Now, why don't we try finishing things off by actually arranging a song as a PNG? So I've got the stems here for a video I released recently where I made a song using only my Singing Monsters sounds. Okay, four PNGs. We have drums, we have melody, we have chords, and we have Base. Now, what is going to be the easiest way to do this? Is it going to work if I just set the opacity to be 25% for all of them? That seems way too easy. Now, I've got the drum track on the bottom here, so the drums are going to be very loud and everything else is layered on top. But I'm very curious to see what happens. It's got everything there, and hopefully, we have a finished song. That sounds like a success so far. There's a lot of noise going on. But we've definitely got multiple layers. I can't hear the bass though. That's pretty cool. Oh, that actually worked. I made a song using P and G's. That is actually pretty impressive that it worked that easily. I just had to turn down the opacity. I'm gonna start sending all my stems out in P and G's. <laughs> One final test. What happens if we just flip different layers in different ways? <laughs> Surely this is gonna be a disaster, right? Ah, oh, we got the popping. That's pretty cool. What? I actually like that. The bass line, not, not with the chords and the melody on top. But the bass line actually sounds really good. What happens when we get to the drop section? <laughs> That's so underwhelming. One final, final thing. Let's throw a ripple on to every different instrument. I've had enough. I spent over two hours 
experimenting with this tool. That is way too long to be listening to absolutely garbage sounds for. I do actually think this is a really cool concept in general. I'd really like to see someone actually try use this as a legitimate music making tool. I feel like it actually has a whole lot of potential, especially if you have more idea of how it actually works. And I'm actually pretty keen to try arranging an original song using only PNGs, but I feel like that'll be a complete disaster, so it'll probably never actually be turned into a video. But anyway, that was Wave to PNG. I'll leave a link to the website down in the description for anyone who wants to check it out, make some absolutely garbage sounds with. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.